Doombots, it's time for the ISO 8 breakdown for the Inhumans. So, Ms. Marvel's here because she's tags as Inhuman. I'll include her in the conversation. I don't consider her a part of the team, um, but it technically works. So, we'll start at Karnak. Now, again, boop, you'll be able to see that not everything is exactly perfect. There's actually multiple different builds for multiple different things. Some are pretty obvious. Some are a little bit less. This is being built for the team itself and not for individual characters. So let's take a quick look and see what works. Starting with Karnak. Biggest problem with Karnak is that he kind of sucks, right? Like he's not particularly great at anything on a standalone character, but what he adds to the team is a little bit of utility. So I am currently using Karnak as a skirmisher. Main reason is the first thing Karnak's going to do is probably go first. He's probably one of the fastest people on the team and he's going to remove buffs from somebody. As a result, it's pretty cool for you to also be able to put a vulnerable on that target. Uh, very unlikely that it's gonna do much more than that. But since most of his attacks are single target, now Crippling Blow will chain, but uh, he doesn't hit very hard. It's very unlikely that he's gonna crit on that. And Precise Attacks is a single target attack pressure points, single target attack, <laughs> you know, you're not going to get much value out of Raider on him, even though he gets a slight amount of crit chance increase on his basic. In this team, by the time you're using Karnak's basic, you probably should have won the fight to begin with. And just a last note, nothing as far as uh, Magister is concerned is doing much but flipping positive to negative effects at random. And again, it might choose a character that has no effects. That's why it says choose one random enemy if they have a positive flip it. It's not amazing. So Raider, not great. Um, really not much that you can do with him. You can just increase his damage and in giving him Skirmisher as his basic doesn't do too much on its own, except for clear evade. But very few people are going to get an evade in the middle of an attack. Striker's okay. You can put Fortifier on him to give him a little survivability. Again, not very relevant. Uh, for me, I stuck with Skirmisher. Just an extra vulnerable on any target whenever he takes an attack. Meaningful enough. Going on next, we have Quake. Uh, Quake also sucks, right? We're waiting on the rest of the Inhumans. The good Inhumans. Medusa, Gorgon, Triton, Maximus the Mad. Any of them. Literally any of them. But for now, we gotta use Quake. Uh, and... She's okay. She works okay. The biggest thing for her is what to use. Now, I have her on Raider. Main reason why is both her basic, her Earthquake, and Shockwave all hit multiple targets. Shockwave is a chain. Seismic Blast hits multiple characters at once. Uh, adjacency and Earthquake hits everybody. Lean into the, the multi-attack. Uh, try to get those Raider crits. She doesn't do much damage. A lot of her attacks are pretty good, especially Shockwave itself is a really good way to clear positive effects. So you really don't get much out of Skirmisher, even though it is okay, especially as a setup from like what Karnak does to get rid of any extra buffs that might be on there. She doesn't have great focus to begin with, so unless you're at Skirmisher 5, you're not going to get much out of it. Striker, pretty terrible, not only damage stat, but damage multipliers on her attacks. Like... 270 270 270 is like the level five of characters that have come out in the last six months you know like 270 is nothing so increasing her damage isn't going to do much for you healer health pool is, is anemic at best um fortifier i mean i guess if she needs to stay alive but very rarely do you need that much value so for me, giving her Raider is going to feed what this team is trying to do the most, which is the most possible damage. Pretty simple. Moving to Crystal. Crystal has two options. Um, and it depends on kind of the overall power of your team. Healer on Crystal is phenomenal. Um, it works very well with Second Wind. Uh, in case someone was to get downed, she heals for a decent chunk. She also has a relatively decent health pool. Uh, and she's relatively quick, so she will throw out a decent number of heals, but it really does make that 
big 40% heal, just a little bit better when it goes off. So it's a bigger heal. Now, if you're Crystal and you're in humans, or specifically the big three, Yo-Yo, Crystal, and Black Bolt, if they're invested in enough, if they're 80, 90, 100k power characters, you don't really need to lean on the healer. Her health pool enough will heal the way it's supposed to, will give enough value to the team. So the team doesn't really need a healer to begin with because it's not really a raid team, but if you are using them or in some part as a raider, healer could be amazing on the character. After that, you'll see what I have, my main investment, I have her at raider. Raider is my pretty, pretty obvious choice because again, all of her attacks hit multiple targets. Uh, Fire and Ice is only one, but it does hit twice, so that fulfills the first requirement, which is it's a multi-attack. Rocknado hits everybody multiple times, so that's four total attacks, four total chances to crit, four chances on every character to put at least one vulnerable. Uh, same with Cold Snap. Uh, it is one-time attack, but it hits everybody, so for all of the reasons that Quake was good with Raider, she's good with Raider. And again, you really don't need much in terms of taking buffs off of characters, but if you did need to, you could probably get them out of characters like Karnak or Quake if you find that buffs are too much. Next, we have Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo is almost clearly a Raider character. Um, makes a lot of sense. There are arguments on this team specifically for Skirmisher. Just in that when she takes her turn, you may want to be able to remove some buffs that other characters have set up. Uh, and she doesn't reliably call Black Bolt on her basic on the full team. She can call anybody. So it's a pretty reasonable statement to say, like Skirmisher. She actually does no damage on her own, so increasing her damage through Striker is not great. Uh, healer. She's not well known for her health pool. She's really there for the sustain she has, but healer is an okay option as with most characters. Fortifier is also another good option if she just absolutely needs to stay alive. Say you only have two or three stars on her and it's really important to get it up there. But Raider, again, rapid strikes. One target, but gets a second attack in. Not a big deal. Flurry, attack primary target two times and then repeat this attack on two additional targets. It's like six attacks, six chances to crit. Run the gauntlet, very similar. Attack all enemies multiple times. So Raider works really well on her. It also works really well if you're just using her and Black Bull as part of a team for like U7 or anything really. So Raider is pretty much the obvious ver version of what you would put ISOs on for her, but you can probably do a little bit more with some other stuff if you really have a good investment in the entire team and this is all set up for something that might or might not matter when we get some more in humans last is black bolt we're skipping right over her uh black bolt we have a couple of options so black bolt does damage and he also has one of the highest damage stats in the game so for me five percent increase ten percent increase in damage that you get from striker is is alone worthwhile you know it's 10 percent damage on the highest damage stat in the game it's just worse worth more than if you were to put it on someone with a significantly lower damage stat you just get more numbers uh, another thing is he doesn't get too much value out of raider uh, maybe at the highest level of raider the crits will make a huge bit of difference but he does so much damage as it is it's a little bit extra value. Uh, the other reason Striker is so good is because that second attack will remove buffs. You know, it will clear two positive effects. So you can take four effects off every time he attacks a target that is vulnerable with a basic or two of, uh, you know, effects off if he ults and that target stays alive. For me, it's just pretty obvious damage. That said, he's got a giant health pool comparatively to the rest of his team. So healer is fine, but he is very slow. Probably not necessary. Um, Fortifier, completely unnecessary on him. Skirmisher, complete. It, Skirmisher is just clearly worse than Striker uh, for what it is, because he's very rarely going to be called to assist, and his assist is already doing the maximum amount of damage, so he doesn't really need to do much more. 
Uh, it's already removing the buffs. You don't need that extra feature on it. He'll be fine. Um, so yeah, it's basically like Striker. Raider is okay. Healer could be okay, depending on how much you invested in him compared to the rest of the team. And again, this is just for the team. So that's pretty much it when it comes to the Inhuman ISO 8s. Comment below let me know if there's anything I missed, any glaring issue. Uh, if for some reason putting healer on Karnak is the correct way to go, something like that. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.